Often elections have a problem with something that's called insincere voting. And so the question we're going to attempt to answer today is how do we avoid what is called insincere voting? And what I mean by insincere voting is when people vote for someone that they don't really want to win because it's better than the alternative. The classic example of this, and I'm just going to pick a political party here, let's say with two Democrats, and one Republican in a race, the party may endorse one candidate to prevent the two candidates, or better said, the two Democrats, from splitting the votes which would result in which would result in the republican winning even if there is a majority of Democrats in the district, if there's two Democrats that split the results between them, the one Republican has a good chance at winning that election. So what happens is we often end up with, with what's called insincere voting, where people decide, as Democrats, we're going to vote for this candidate, even though it's not our preference. We prefer the other Democrat, but it's better than the Republican, so we're all going to vote insincerely for one person. Well, to prevent this insincere vote and to allow people to actually vote for who they want to win without allowing somebody they definitely don't want to win from coming out on top, we have another method of voting called instant runoff voting. How instant runoff voting works is we have a prioritized schedule of votes and results, and we look at the choice with the least first place votes. And that choice is eliminated. Then the votes are redistributed. And we're going to repeat this process until a candidate receives greater than 50% of the votes. That way, I could vote for my number one choice as a Democrat, my number two choice as the other Democrat, and then my number three choice as the Republican. That way, if my preferred Democrat loses, the other Democrat would still have a preference over the Republicans. So by splitting the votes between the Democrats, we have not hurt the chance of the Democrat winning, if that's truly the intent of the people. To set up an example of this, let's say we're trying to decide on a company trip. And we've got the choices. We could go to Hawaii. 
We could go to Mexico. We could go to the Bahamas. We could go to Washington, DC. Or we could go to Florida. And so we are going to conduct an election. And we've got several people's first preference, second preference, third preference, fourth preference, and fifth preference. And we find out three people have voted to go to Mexico first, then the Bahamas, then Hawaii, then Washington, DC, then Florida. Four people have voted to go to the Bahamas, then Hawaii, then Washington, then Mexico, then Florida. Four people have voted to go to Mexico, then Washington, then the Bahamas, then Hawaii, then Florida. Six people have voted to go to Washington, then the Bahamas, then Hawaii, then Florida, then Mexico. Two people have voted to go to Mexico, then Florida, then Hawaii, then the Bahamas, then Washington. And finally, we've got one vote that wants to go to Florida, then Hawaii, then Washington, then Mexico, then the Bahamas. And if we add across the top 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1, is 20 votes total, which means in order to win this election, half plus 1, 11 are needed to win. Because 50% isn't enough. You need more than 50%. So 10 would only be 50%. And so if we look at these results, if we're looking for the current leader, What we'll see is Mexico is the current leader pulling in a total of nine votes. 3 plus 4 plus 2 is Mexico with nine votes. But we said 11 are needed to win. Because we need a majority. So then we look at the one with the fewest first place votes. The fewest first place votes, uh, you might notice, is Hawaii. Hawaii didn't receive any first place votes. Hawaii got zero first place votes, so it's going to be eliminated. And we will redistribute the votes. So we're going to go through all the Hawaii's. And we're going to cross off all the Hawaii's. Hawaii's being eliminated from the election. And when we do that, we'll end up with a new priority schedule. It's still going to be very similar. We're just going to have first second, third, fourth, and fifth place now. Oh, no fifth place anymore. And we see now we've got three votes that are going to be Mexico, Bahamas, Washington, DC, and Florida. Notice we've dropped Hawaii from that list. In the next column, we've got four votes that are for the Bahamas, then Washington, then Mexico, then Florida. In the next column, we've got four votes that are for Mexico, 
Washington, Bahamas, Florida. In the next column, there's six votes that are now for Washington, Bahamas, Florida, Mexico. Next, we've got two votes going for Mexico, Florida, Bahamas, and Washington. And finally, one vote that still stands for Florida, Washington, Mexico, and the Bahamas. We still have 20 votes total. And we still have 11 needed to win. So we do it again and see if somebody's got a majority now. Our current leader is still going to be Mexico, which still has nine first place votes. Because really, nothing's changed at the top when we eliminated Hawaii. Mexico is still on top. But we still need 11 needed to win. So we're going to repeat this process by identifying who has the fewest first place votes. This time, the fewest first place votes is going to go to Florida, who only has one first place votes. And so Florida is going to be eliminated. And we will redistribute the votes. So we eliminate all the Floridas from our table. And notice now that last column, who voted first for Florida and wanted Washington, DC second, now their vote's going to go to Washington, DC in the next schedule. So now we're identifying their first, second, and third preferences. And we see three people have voted for Mexico, Bahamas, and Washington. We see four people have voted for Bahamas, Washington, Mexico. We see four people have voted for Mexico, Washington, Bahamas. We see six people have voted for Washington, Bahamas, Mexico. And we see two people have voted for Mexico, Bahamas, Washington. And finally, one person has voted for Washington, Mexico, and Bahamas. One thing we might notice here is that we've got a column that's Mexico, Bahamas, Washington, and another comma that's Mexico, Bahamas, Washington. And so to make that more efficient, I'm going to change the number at the top from 3 to 5, because 3 plus 2 is 5. And I'm going to eliminate that other column. Now each column is unique. And it kind of consolidates our results. And then we can repeat the process again, looking for our current leader to see if anybody's got at least half the votes. What we notice is still Mexico's on top with nine votes. But again, 11 are needed to win. So we're going to eliminate the one with the fewest first place votes. And in this case, the one with the fewest first place votes is going to be the Bahamas that only have four votes.
So the Bahamas are going to be eliminated and redistributed. So we'll cross off all of our Bahamas. And when we do that, you're going to notice we're going to get that repeating going on again. Notice that Mexico, Washington is 5, but also we'll end up with those four Mexico, Washington. So those are going to be lumped together. The other three columns all go Washington, Mexico with what's left. So I'm going to lump those together as I make my new preference schedule identifying who's the first and second preference. We said 5 plus 4 is 9 people voting Mexico, then Washington. And then we see 4 plus 6 plus 1, 11 people are voting Washington, then Mexico. which means now we finally have a winner because now Washington, D.C. has 11 votes. A majority of the 20 votes. And Washington is the official winner. So the trip is going to go with Washington, D.C. This way, everybody's preference schedule is considered, not just your first place preference, but now your second place preference being higher than third place actually matters in the results. You might not get your number one pick, but you're more likely to get your number two pick with instant runoff voting. So at first glance, this seems like a much better option. What could possibly go wrong? Well, let's look at that. What is wrong? with instant runoff voting, IRV for short. And well, there's a couple problems. One is it may still violate the Condorcet criterion. And we saw that with plurality voting. Just because one person wins in head-to-head -head matchups does not mean that person is going to win in the overall election. But there's another fairness criteria that gets in trouble with instant runoff voting. We call this the monotonicity criterion. And that is the issue that if I change my votes, to increase preference for a candidate, it should not harm the candidate. If I decide I have a higher preference for candidate A and I change my ballot to reflect that, it should not hurt candidate A to increase my preference for that. But that actually can happen with instant runoff voting. Let's consider an election between candidate A, B, and C. And let's build this preference schedule for first, second, and third. And there were four results. We said 37 of them decided to vote A, B, C. 
and then 22 of them decided to vote BCA. And then 12 of them decided to vote BAC. And 29 of them decided to vote CAB. And if you add that up, that's 100 votes, which means 51 are needed to win, more than half. Well, at our first go around, um, A has 37 votes. and is winning, but 51 are needed for a majority. So we say, OK, looking at this, A has 37, B has 34, C has 29. So C has fewest first place votes and is eliminated. So we're going to eliminate C from everybody's ballot. When we do that, just to help us group together, um, we've got A, B in the first and second column. So we're going to lump those together. And B, A in the second and third column, we're going to lump those together to get our new preference schedule. First and second. And 37 plus 29 is 66 votes going A then B. And 22 plus 12 is 34 votes who prefer B than A. And so it's really clear from this election that our winner is going to be A. With 66 votes. That's great. But let's say before this election actually happened, everyone heard, gee, A, A seems to be way ahead. So I'm going to change my vote. I'm going to be a bandwagon voter. I'm going to say, what if 10 who voted BAC B first, A second, C third changed to ABC. Changed to ABC. So looking at our original preference schedule, those BACs in the third column 10 of them are going to bandwagon and say, gee, I'm going to change from BAC to ABC. 10 of them are going to switch over to the first column because they want to make sure they say they voted for the winner. Well, when we do that, we end up with this new preference schedule, first, second, third. Now instead of 37, there's 47 people who have voted ABC. We still have the 22 who voted BCA. But now there's only two who voted BAC because all those bandwagon voters jumped off the block wanted to vote for A, because A is going to win, right? And 29 people still voting CAB.
Well, looking at our results, we still have A as the leader. A only has 47 votes, though. But 51 are needed to win. So the election isn't over. We've got to eliminate someone. And now, because of the bandwagon voters, B only has 24 votes. B now has the fewest first place votes and is eliminated. So now we eliminate B this time. And when we do that, we see AC showing up in the first and third column. We're going to combine those together. We see CA showing up in the second and fourth column. We'll combine those together. And we get our new preference schedule with first and second preference. 42 plus 2 means we've got 49 people voting AC. And 22 plus 29 means we have 51 people voting C, A, which means now, because of the bandwagon voters, because people decided to increase their preference for A over B, all of a sudden now C is the winner with 51 votes. This violates the monotonicity criterion. By increasing preference for A, we actually hurt A. It was actually better for A to come in second place for all those other votes than to come in first place. So this system is not perfect either, but it does seem to be better than plurality because it does allow for your second preference to stand out ahead of your third preference. So let's give you a chance to practice some instant runoff voting elections and see how those work. And we'll see you in the next video as we continue our search for a fair voting system.